and welcome to Introduction to SketchUp with Mr. Ferranti. In this second video, we're going to show you how to set up your drawing in Google SketchUp. So we're going to take our hand-drafted model with all of our dimensions, and I have a sample for you located on our website. Okay, and we're in task four. on the site analysis page of our website. So to access this page, just as a quick review, you can go to your menu. It's under the design process. You click that arrow, open that up, and we're on the site analysis page. And we're scrolled down now to task four. All right, so these numbers are gonna become important. You're gonna need these to, uh, to build your drawing. In this video, I'm just gonna show you how to get started. I'm gonna show you how to use a few tools. All right, the first thing I did was um, I'm gonna measure the paper in 40 scale so I can start by drawing the paper as a base for my model. This isn't necessary, but it's something I would like you guys to do for this project. I think it, it is helpful. All right, so um, in Google SketchUp, what I'm gonna do is come over to my Scenes button and I'm gonna select the plan view. I wanna make sure I'm in that, okay? By default, you're probably in one of the elevation drawings, but if I select the plan view, I'm now looking down from the top. I can use the pan or the shortcut is H and that gives me the pan finger and I can drag my drawing so that I can see my axis. Okay, so let me explain how the axis works and to do that, I'm also gonna use my orbit tool. If I orbit my drawing back, back up a little bit, you're gonna see there's a couple of planes because we're drawing in three dimensions. So I'm gonna actually go back to my elevation it's a little easier here. So you can see that you have a, a red line which represents your x-axis. You have a green line that represents your y-axis. And then because we're in three dimensions, we also have a z-axis, which is the blue. All right, and this is gonna become important to laying out your drawing. So again, now I'm gonna switch back to that plan view. I'm gonna use that hand tool, the pan, to just drag this over. So I'm looking just at my X and my Y axis. Okay, by the way, you can also see a dotted blue line. That's your Z axis going below the green plane that we're drawing on. So the green plane represents the floor. And this red dotted line represents the X axis continuing in a negative quadrant. And the green represents the Y axis in the negative quadrant. Okay, so it's very similar to a math class if you're looking at coordinate plane system. All right, so to begin our drawing, I'm gonna take the rectangle tool and I'm gonna click right here at the origin point. And then I'm gonna put in two numbers. Okay, the first one is gonna represent the length of the paper, which if I measured that in feet, it's about 68 feet. So I'm gonna type in 68 feet and the foot symbol is important. So when I click, that begins my drawing. Now I could either pull my drawing this way or I can just type. Now you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, the dimensions are changing as I'm drawing, okay? We're just gonna type the dimensions in instead. Now you don't have to click in here. As a matter of fact, you can't click in here. What you wanna do is as you start your drawing by clicking and then dragging, that tells the computer which way you wanna draw and then you just start typing 68 and you'll notice the 68 in the bottom right hand corner. Now if I move my drawing, that changes my number. So I'm gonna type 68, put the foot symbol in and then a comma Okay, so that gives me my length of 68 feet and my width is going to be 44 feet. 
So I'm going to put in 44 feet and then enter. Okay, so now I'm going to come to my zoom tool, which is typically over in this bar, but it's going to be under the more tools right now. I'm going to scroll down and you can find the zoom tool and then I can click and drag to zoom out. Okay, and this represents the full size sheet of paper that we were drawing with. Right, now this gives me a place to put my building lines. And just like we drew this by hand on paper, we're gonna use a pencil. We can come over to about this location on the page and I can click to begin drawing my lines. Now you can see as you start to draw, this puts it on the face of the paper and it's in the red axis. So that means it's parallel to the red line, the, the original red axis line, which is down here. Right, so this would not be parallel. I want that line to be parallel. And then I have to check what my dimension is there. And the full dimension is 34 feet, four inches. So I can refer back to that drawing and I can type in 34 feet, four inches. And then I can hit enter. All right, the next line that I was gonna draw is this wall F and that's nine feet, seven inches. So I want to take that line and I want to make sure it's on the face still and it shows up green so that I'm parallel to the green axis line. Right, that tells me that I have a 90 degree angle in this corner, which is what I want. And again, that distance is nine feet, seven inches, nine feet, seven inches. Okay. And now I'm going to hit escape to get out of my drawing because I have to set an angle here. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I'm going to return back and check my drawing. And I have 24 feet, three inches. So I'm going to use my pencil tool again, click on the end point of the line that I started with. And then again, I'm going to put that dimension of 24 feet, three inches to draw this line four feet, three inches. Okay, and again, I'm gonna take this on the face, on that red axis. I get a 90 degree angle down there and I'm gonna draw that bottom line now, 29 feet, seven inches. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to set my angles. Now in the classroom, when we drew this by hand, we used that flex ruler that had the built-in protractor. So what I have to do is I have to click on the more tools and I need to select my protractor. I take that protractor tool and I'm gonna set it on the end point, right? Just like we did with the flex ruler where we took the little hole in the flex ruler and we set it over the end of the wall. I'm gonna click on the end point to set that protractor down on the paper. And then I'm gonna turn the protractor and I'm gonna click again on that wall that I already built so that it sets the protractor to begin checking the angle now that I wanna draw relative to that wall. All right, now if you remember the angle that we wanted was 135 degrees or you could say 235 or 225 I guess so if I start to swing that protractor around you can see it's going to set me a guideline if I type in 225 it gives me this angle inside right so what I want to do is I want to set that protractor and I actually want to set that angle to 135 because this is giving me this angle relative to this wall, but it's giving me this inside angle or the outside angle, okay? Not the angle that we actually measured in the classroom, which was on the flip side of that. All right, so this is right. You can see I get a guideline there, right? And just like you drew your guidelines 
right, with a light pencil. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in now and measure from that point along this guideline the distance of the wall, which is six feet 11. So I click, I type six feet, 11 inches. Okay, and I hit enter. All right, now, I probably can just come down here and set this angle. I could just kind of close out my wall, but I want you to try using that protractor one more time. And let's see if we set the angle off of here. Okay, if we can get this wall to close up properly if we measured correctly. All right, so if I set that angle to 135, I just type that in just like I did with uh, with the pencil tool, you can, you can type in the degrees without using any symbols. You can just type in 135 and hit enter. And that sets the guideline. And now I can draw with the pencil from this endpoint. Okay, along that guideline, I could type in 13 feet, six inches to see if our measurements are correct. And it looks like it closes up almost. So we might not have had a perfect measurement. And you can see if we were to zoom in, we're like really close, but not, not quite on there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cheat a little bit. And if you undo, which is control Z, we can just go back to that pencil tool and you can click on the endpoint and then click on this endpoint and that closes out our drawing. Now we can come up to the eraser tool and we can erase those guidelines. We don't need them there anymore. They just get confusing sometimes. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my orbit tool and I'm gonna rotate this back. Okay, so you could see I have a flat piece of paper and I have a flat building, right, two dimensions. Now we're gonna turn this into a three dimension drawing. The push pull tool is right here. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna click on the piece of paper and I'm gonna go in a negative direction and I'm gonna build a foundation. Right? If this was a house, the foundation would go down three and a half to four feet. So we're just gonna use four feet. So I'm just gonna type in four feet. Okay? And now I have a four foot thick box. I made that paper go down four feet underground. And it just gives us a, a place to put our our model so that's why I wanted you to draw that all right now what we can do is we can take our building and what we have to do with our building is we have to do those outside walls now the outside walls are a lot easier you don't need the pencil tool we're gonna use another tool which is located right here under the more tools actually and it's called offset it's this one right here we click that offset tool Okay, you're gonna click inside of your building and you can see as you pull it outside your building, your walls thicken up and we're gonna make our walls one foot thick. That's what we did on paper. So we're gonna make those one foot. Okay, now your walls are drawn and then we're gonna make these three dimensions. So we go back to that push pull tool. Before I do that, I'm gonna actually just zoom in a little bit. And then I'm gonna orbit a little bit. And then I'm gonna to go to the push pull tool. And as I, I have to get inside the wall. So you can see there's a little arrow. If the arrow points inside the wall, you can see how the walls change color a little bit and they get shaded a little. If you click that and you pull those up and you type 10 feet, which is the height of the room. Now you have your three dimensional building. All right, now I can come back down here to more tools. Scroll to the bottom, I can go to zoom extents. And zoom this, I can close this window that's open. And I can see my building. I can orbit, and see how I've done so far. Okay, in the next part of this video, In the next part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how now to add the doors and add the windows, right? And this is where your measurements 
become important from your uh, site analysis. And so the first thing we want to do is come down here and take our tape measure tool. And I want to start my tape measure right in that corner. And I want to pull the tape measure out along the baseline right here. And I want to type in seven inches because that was the measurement we took. And then I hit enter. And what that does is it puts a little, a little guideline, a little pencil mark right on the floor, seven inches away. And I'm just going to move my drawing around a little bit so I can see where I'm at. Click the pencil. I can either use the pencil tool or I could use the rectangle, but I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'm going to click on that guideline, that little point, that pencil mark. I'm going to come up on the face and notice I'm, I'm following the blue axis, which was the Z axis. Okay, so I can extend up in three dimensions, seven feet for the height of my door. Okay, on the X axis, on that face of the wall, I'm going to come over three feet, three feet for the width of the door. And then I got to come back down on that blue axis, another seven feet or right on edge is fine as well. And now I have my draw penciled in there, the door penciled in. With the push pull tool here, I can click that door and push the door out one foot. And now I have a hole cut into the door and I can just orbit to make sure that that door went all the way through. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is cut out the window. Okay, when I take my tape measure again, and I'm gonna have to go back to my drawing because I need to see the distances. So I have one foot eight and one foot 10. So off this corner is one foot eight. Which corner is that? It's one foot 10. All right. One thing I, I like to do sometimes is rotate my drawing even all the way around to kind of match the paper. It helps me orient myself. So I have one foot eight off that corner. So that's this corner here. I'm gonna pull my tape measure select that origin point come along the edge there and just type in one foot eight okay and now i can take the orbit tool again and circle around and i want to zoom zoom in a little bit you can see the pencil mark on the floor and I can take my pencil I'm sorry my tape measure I also have to come up a certain distance okay, and we're about one foot or two foot About two feet, 10 inches off the floor. So I click on that guide point, And again, I want to follow that blue axis. And I type in two foot, 9.5 inches is what, what it was. And that gives me now a guideline off the floor. So now I can take my pencil or I can use the rectangle. If I use the rectangle, I'm going to type in 10 feet, comma, 5 feet. And that gives me my window, which is 10 feet long and 5 feet high. I can zoom out a little bit. And there's my window. All right, now I can take that push-pull tool, click the window, push it out one foot. And now I have a window cut in. Okay, now the window has glass on it, so we're gonna show you now how to add some materials. I'm gonna take the rectangle tool and I'm gonna 
install a window or a window pane over the cutout. So I just clicked on the outside corner and I'm gonna come over here to this outside corner and I fill that in. But now I'm gonna come over here to my materials tool right? and I click that search button. And over here I have glass and mirrors and you can select a glass. I like this one. And then you use that fill bucket and you put the glass right in the window. Okay, we can also think about what the floor looks like. So there's tile somewhere in here, tile. And we can pick a tile that looks similar to what's in the classroom, maybe something like this. And I can fill that in here. And I could pick something else for outside if I want to, just to give it a different look. So we can find some, some other surface that looks good. I'm gonna take this darker color and just click that on the outside. You can also take a look at the walls. Right? And since we're doing existing conditions, we can see if there's anything here with concrete or maybe I think somewhere there's stone. Nah, that's not it. Roofing. Maybe under brick cladding, we can find some concrete block that looks something like what's in the classroom, just not the same color. So maybe one of these might look good. Try this one and we can then do all the outsides of the wall use the orbit tool to spin around catch the other walls all right and we can go back in and erase that guideline as well all right so now you have a pretty complete drawing just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what we have here if you want to go ahead and add the materials to the outside you can as well and then I'm going to show you now how to draw a door so I'm going to zoom in to the door I'm going to close my materials I'm going to use the pan tool so I can get up in here a little bit. All right, now I'm going to use the pencil and I'm going to click at the bottom of the door on the end point. I'm on this outside corner because that's where the door hinges and I'm going to come out. I can either draw it straight or I can come out on an angle as long as I'm on, on the face, on the floor face there and I can type three feet. Okay. And then I wanna come up, but I wanna make sure that I'm on my blue axis and I wanna come up seven feet. And then I'm gonna connect back to the end point here. All right, and that gives me a two dimensional door, which I'm gonna to have to make three dimensions. So I'm gonna use the push pull tool I'm going to click on the door and I'm going to come out four inches for the thickness of the door. So I type in four inches and I hit enter. All right, I have a door. I can rotate around a little bit. There is glass in the door. I'm not going to ask you to measure it. I'm just going to use the rectangle and you can get a little bit of a rectangle on the face that's proportional. So if you take a look at the glass on the door and just kind of rough it in, that'll be fine. Hit enter. Hit escape to get out of that command. Use the push pull tool. Select the window, push it through four inches. So I type in four inches. That cuts a hole in my window. I'm going to come back and fill that now. Back in. Come back to my materials. 
come back to the glass, pick that glass, pop it in the window. Now I have the window and the door. You can add some color to the door. It's like a wood grain color, or maybe you can find a wood grain in here. Let's see what we got. Take this one here, rotate with the orbit tool. And again, I can pick that paint bucket and I can color in the door. If you wanna be perfect, you can uh, go ahead and try to hit all those little spots by zooming in and orbiting. It's gonna be hard to get the top one, so I'm gonna leave that. All right, so now you have that door and we are pretty, pretty good. So that's what your uh, project might wind up looking like. All right, we're gonna come back in the next video and we'll show you how to add dimension lines. I'm just gonna come back out here, close this, go to my zoom extends tool. That gets me back out. I'm gonna take my scene and I'm gonna take a look at different elevations with you real quick where I can get my isometric drawing zoom out a little bit close this window orbit so that I can see what the classroom looks like from above all right that is the first part of uh, this project, we're going to show you how to do the dimension lines in the next phase of in the next video. Thanks for watching.